Hey guys and welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. As we all know, thin and light ultra portable laptops are not gaming systems. Focusing more on productivity, performance and battery life for workers on the go, these sorts of laptops aren't equipped with enough integrated graphics horsepower to take on today's popular AAA titles. Nimble machines like Ultrabooks instead leave gaming to their big gaming laptop brothers, which trade off portability for pure discrete GPU power. While the integrated GPU in most ultra portables isn't anything special, that doesn't mean it's completely useless. It's actually possible to game on an Ultrabook, it's just a matter of choosing the game and its settings carefully such that it's not too intensive for the 15 watt Intel CPU in most low power laptops. With this in mind, I went and tested 31 games on my Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon, everything from modern AAA titles to older 2D platformers, to give you an idea of what games are actually playable on modern ultra portables. The ThinkPad X1 Carbon I used here is the entry level model with an Intel KB Lake Core i5 7200U processor, 8GB of RAM and a 1080p display. The i5-7200U is essentially the base model U-series CPU you'll find in ultra portables, with two cores, four threads and a base clock of 2.5GHz with a boost up to 3.1GHz. The integrated GPU is an HD620 with 24 execution units clocked up to 1000MHz. All the testing you'll see in this video is reflective of the entry level ultra portable experience, but of course you can find laptops with more powerful CPUs like the i7-7500U which delivers around 5% more graphics performance. Occasionally you might see ultra portables with Iris Plus graphics as well which use CPUs like the i7-7567U with double the GPU execution units, but these laptops are rare so our testing is largely representative of most standard ultra books. The first group of games I tested were modern AAA titles, ranging from new games like Prey to titles like The Witcher 3 from a few years back. All of these games were designed to be playable on at least Xbox One console hardware, and all require some form of discrete GPU to meet their minimum requirements. It wasn't surprising to discover that as ultra portables don't meet the minimum requirements to play any of these games, that none could be played at a reasonable quality level. A number of games didn't load at all, games like The Witcher 3 were plagued with horrendous input lag that made the game completely unplayable and uh, every other title failed to hit even 25 frames per second at the lowest possible quality settings at a mere 720p resolution. So as a quick example, here's a look at me seriously struggling to play Fallout 4 at up to a whopping 24 frames per second. I guess if I wanted a cinematic experience, I'd go see the new Spider-Man film, but hey, instead, you know, I'm still here benchmarking games in true hardware unboxed fashion. As for Prey, don't even bother exploring Talos 1 because you'll be stuck with a sub-cinematic experience at the lowest possible detail settings. So it's safe to say that if you're trying to play a AAA title released in the past four years on a modern ultra book, you're probably going to have a bad time. Considering ultra portables can't really play modern games with much success, I decided to go further back and attempt to play a wide range of games from 2004's Grand Theft Auto San Andreas right up until 2013's Tomb Raider. Depending on the game in question, it may come as a surprise that some of these tiles are very playable on ultra portables if you're willing to sacrifice visual quality. Of all the games I tested from 2013 and earlier, only two titles were largely unplayable. Alan Wake didn't launch at all, while Black Flag hovered under 30 frames per second at the lowest settings. Every other game though was playable, albeit often at the lowest settings at 720p. Some of these older titles like Oblivion and GTA San Andreas were quite playable at 1080p, 
While I was surprised that a game like Far Cry 3 was comfortably playable at the lower settings at 720p. In fact, here's a look at me zooming around the island of Far Cry 3. It's far from the prettiest experience at 720p with low detail settings, but the game runs reasonably smoothly on something released just 5 years ago. Skyrim fans looking for yet another device to play the game on can actually hit 1080p here at 35 to 45 fps, and that's a good choice considering 720p can't consistently achieve 60 fps. My choice for the best experience of the pack comes from its preceding title though in Oblivion, which runs at near maximum settings in the 50 to 60 fps bracket. It's always great to head back into that outstanding game and get a nice hit of nostalgia. I'm not a big fan of esports titles personally, but I did load three of the most popular ones onto the ThinkPad X1 Carbon to see if they were playable on integrated graphics. Here are the results. Of the three games, the only one I'd say isn't playable is CSGO, as you really want to play above 60 FPS, which integrated graphics simply cannot hit. It's better news for both Overwatch and Rocket League though, as Overwatch is playable on the lowest possible settings if you're willing to put up with the occasional dip below 60fps in heavy combat, while Rocket League achieves 60fps without much issue at 900p. None of these titles managed to hit native 1080p, but two of three being playable at lower resolutions is a good result nonetheless. There are two categories of games that are almost always playable on low-end hardware like Ultra Portables with integrated graphics, indie titles and 2D games. Games that fall into either of these categories tend not to be particularly graphically intensive relative to modern AAA titles, so most can be enjoyed on laptops. Like with games from before 2013, most of these semi-modern indie titles are very playable on ultra-portable hardware. The experience in some of these titles isn't ideal. Games like Bastion and Ori and the Blind Forest would be better at 60fps but can't manage that level of performance on integrated graphics and have limited if any graphic settings. Others like Stardew Valley are perfect for weak laptop hardware. Seriously though, check out Ori and the Blind Forest on laptop hardware. This is a gorgeous game that will blow you away on integrated graphics. FTL is a personal favourite of mine as it runs fantastically and doesn't obliterate your battery in the process, which is to be expected from a mere 2D game. While ultra portables aren't as suited to gaming as true gaming laptops, it's still possible to play a wide variety of games on the slow integrated graphics you'll find inside. You may not be able to hit the best quality levels or the highest frame rates, but setting games to the lowest preset and resolution can deliver decent playable results. Of the 8 modern AAA titles I tested, none were playable. However, 10 of 12 AAA games from 2013 or earlier could be played at low detail settings, with 5 of those 10 running comfortably at 1080p. Two titles, Oblivion and GTA San Andreas, run at near maximum quality settings. Esports titles were easier to run than modern AAA games, with both Overwatch and Rocket League hitting acceptable frame rates at low detail settings. CSGO was unplayable, but only because it couldn't hit consistently over 60 FPS. The best category of games though, as I mentioned earlier, are the 2D and indie titles. Of the 8 games I tested, only one failed to hit a consistent 30 frames per second, Brothers A Tale of Two Sons, while every other title ran reasonably well, including newer 3D games like The Witness. The final tally of games stands as follows. Of the 31 games I tested, 19 ran and were playable on the Core i7-7200U. Seven of these games only ran at resolutions below 1080p, while nine needed to be run at the lowest possible detail settings. Seven games though ran at near maximum settings, though five of those seven were indie titles. That's a surprisingly good result for hardware that's known to struggle playing 3D games. The lowest detail settings may not look the prettiest, but heading into Skyrim on a laptop is still an enjoyable experience if you don't have proper gaming hardware available. Anyway, that's it for this look at ultra portable gaming. I hope you guys learnt something and now know exactly what you can play on your KB Lake powered ultra portable. If you like this content, definitely check us out on Patreon and I'll catch you in the next one.